Hey friends, thanks for joining me for this video. As you can see from the title, we're gonna be focusing on fragrances from my collection that I believe are soft, demure, gentle florals. A number of weeks ago, I posted a video called Powerhouse Florals or Strong Florals for Spring. I love a good strong floral, but there are some times and some occasions and some moods where you just want something a little bit softer, more girly, maybe a little bit more airy that won't really project out far won't call attention to itself. You just want to be a little bit more proper, if you will, with a softer fragrance. And so I've got a good lineup here for you, some that I'm sure you've heard of, and maybe a few new names for you. Let's jump right in. I'm going to cheat a little bit right out of the gate here because the first one is actually a floral gourmand fragrance, but I think it deserves some love and some attention, and I don't really hear anyone talking about it here on YouTube. I wish I had gotten the bigger bottle because it has a gold rim on the top that is pretty, and this is Kate Spade Sparkle. This is an Eau de Parfum intense concentration, but it's really not a super strong, overpowering fragrance. This is sweet from a black currant note and a hawthorn note in the middle, which has like its floral and honey at the same time, but it also has what is being called a purple peony note. So you do get just some really gentle florals in here. I find this to be a delicate, fresh out of the shower, but yet also fruity and floral fragrance that um, is great for daytime. It's not, it doesn't have like that strong nighttime vibe, although of course you can wear any fragrance whenever. This is available at Ulta where I picked it up. It's really like an underrated gem. And if this had edges to it, I would say that the edges of the smell are like chenille in texture. They're a little soft and fuzzy. And it's the heart of this that is both sweet and floral. This does have a moderate projection. So it's not like close to the skin, but it definitely isn't a knock you out kind of fragrance. It's subtle. There's something really light and airy about it on your skin. One that's newer to my collection and that I had to grow into, I thought it was nice when I got it, but I wasn't crazy about it. And I've talked about this a bit recently, so forgive me for the repeat, but it's Daniel Hosier and it's Tuberose. This is a very subtle, light green Tuberose fragrance. It's crisp for when you want to feel put together. If you want sort of a mental outfit image, I'm looking at a crisp white linen button down shirt with maybe some really tailored blue jeans or even some linen pants as well and a kitten heel <laughs> will go along well with this. This is a nicely put together tailored fragrance. The, the smell has structure to it, but the lines are clean and green and light. Then I have Good Girl Legere, which, you know, it can take on lots of different personalities, but for the sake of this video, let's say this is that fragrance that you would wear with your happy summer floral dress. I'm not talking about the dress that you would wear to sort of romp through the woods. I'm talking about the dress that you might wear to a garden party, to a brunch or something of that nature a baby shower. It's a pretty white floral fragrance. It has jasmine and a little hint of tuberose. There's some citrus at the top and there are some gourmand kinds of notes in the base like tonka bean and vanilla. And I think there's also cashmere in here. It's smooth, it's soft, it's ladylike, it's pretty, it's light and it's refined, but it's not loud. A fragrance that I think is super elegant. It's one that I would not hesitate to wear to the office. And it comes across really just elegant. I don't have another word for it, really elegant and refined, but it's super soft and light. It doesn't project very much. Someone has to be in your scent bubble to get a whiff of this. There's no denying that the person that wears this is going to feel very put together. And it's Prada La Femme. I do wish that this had longer longevity. I would say that it's uh, light to moderate at best and very soft on the skin. This is both yellow and white florals, although I get mostly white florals out of here. It's such, ah. Uh, <laughs> this fragrance this is it smells like the prettiest shower gel and soap and florals put together <sighs> even though it's light and soapy and floral there's also something really rich and thick but not cloying and not overbearing not overpowering there's something solid in here. Now, there's like a beeswax note, there's some vanilla, there's a little vetiver, and maybe that's what's giving it that base. 
all about that base, right? <laughs> but there's no denying that the florals in here are the star of the show with that touch of soapiness. And I'm not talking about like Dove soap. I'm talking about like the most luxurious spa soap that you've ever had. I really enjoy this and just, I do wish that it was thicker and I wished it lasted longer because this is like signature scent worthy for sure for me. Then two fragrances from an emerging perfumer that has caught YouTube by storm because we love so many of his fragrances, but you don't hear these talked about a lot. The house is Theodoros Calatinis, and this is Plumeria, which is Frangipani. So this has a little bit of sandalwood in it too. And then Jasmine of Athens, which is exactly how it sounds. It's a very Jasmine forward fragrance. I would say that both of these are a touch in Dalek. What do I mean by that? It's that sense of like a decaying flower that sounds bad but just think about like when a flower is fully mature and it's on sort of the downward end and it's the most fragrant then it gives off a scent that's a little bit like earthy and maybe a little tiny bit dirty smelling it's not bad yet though so that's what I mean like just on the cusp of decaying and these are good to layer together the frangipani with the jasmine or alone they come across very sort of solo floral meaning that the note that it features is super prominent so you get strong frangipani in here Actually, you get a little bit of the sandalwood too. So, and a hint, a little like dot of citrus on here, but this jasmine one is heavy on the jasmine. A very, yeah, well, maybe this isn't as indolic. Maybe this is a bit on the cleaner side and this actually comes across a little bit more indolic to me. But together, layered together, they're actually quite nice. Separate, they're nice as well. They're demure, they're soft on the skin and very easy to wear in like office settings and that kind of a thing. Another really clean, soft floral that I actually am selling because I don't know that it works for me the best because there's something about it that comes across a little bit cold. But the reason that I'm mentioning it here is because when I wore it, everyone around me just loved it on me and wanted to know what I was wearing. It is light and you get a nice little scent bubble. It's not a monster at all and it's an affordable gem. It's from Frank Olivier and it's called White Touch. This is that clean floral that has freesia. There's violet. I'm checking out the notes here for y'all. <laughs> there's a water lily. There's some melon and pear at the top. So this is a little bit like a Cento overdose from Zerzhov. If it had a cousin that smelled a little bit soapier and a bit more metallic, it would go toward white touch. But like I said, a lot of people like this on me. So there was just something about it that didn't work for me, but you might like it and it's affordable. And I would definitely recommend it if that note structure sounds like your jam. One especially soft, but statement making floral fragrance. It also counts as a vanilla fragrance. It also counts as a powdery fragrance. It is Al Haramain's Genoon Noir, which is said to be a dupe for Dama Bianca from Zerzhov. Gorgeous, very, very pretty, violet, lily of the valley, orris, which gives it this nice powderiness, vanilla, musk, sandalwood. I think this is one of the most elegant floral musky powdery fragrances out there and an affordable gem. Definitely get your hands on this if you like the profile of Dama Bianca. Beautiful. Then a fragrance that I've probably talked a lot about recently, forgive me, but it bears repeating again and again in videos because it's such a lovely fragrance. It's Katra in Rose from Boucheron. I just love the bottle. I just talked about this one in a fun video that just talked purely about bottles, nothing else, just the bottles. What a pretty frosted pink delicate little bottle and i love that it twists down like this this is a a bit of a fruity fragrance it also has some citrus but the dominant note in here is this really pretty rose a bright effervescent lovely rose soft pretty ladylike very highly feminine fragrance this one is hard to beat. Uh, it doesn't, it's again, not beast mode, very sort of soft around you and people will love it on you. Very, very pretty, very affordable gem. Probably the softest, most demure floral that I have in my collection. And it's also a powdery gem, if you like that, with some musk. Simone Kozak Sublime or Sublime. Very pretty, delicate looking bottle here with the little tassel. <laughs> this is Gardenia. Oh my God, absolutely gorgeous. This is gardenia, this is violet leaf. It's got some jasmine, some heliotrope to add some powderiness. 
There's a little bit of patchouli here. It feels slightly musky too. This is a very, very pretty fragrance. It reminds me of clouds and fluffiness. In fact, maybe I should put this in my fluffy fragrances video too that's coming up. Um, it's very soft on the skin. It becomes a skin scent quickly and creates just this really soft, subtle, pretty bubble around you. You will feel like ballerina pretty in this and like you're about to get into a fluffy robe or something. Really, really pretty fragrance. You have to like that violet leaf note because it's fairly prominent in here. So the fragrance smells kind of purple, okay? Like imagine your lilac soaps and things like that. It smells a little bit like that with the beauty of the gardenia in it as well, even a little hint of citrus. So sublime, really pretty, unique fragrance. Speaking of violet leaf, you find it in this next fragrance. I really love the actual physical bottle of this just as much as the fragrance. It is McQueen Eau Blanche. I love the regular McQueen as well, which is more tuberose dominant and it has a black top, same bottle, black top, black rim. So there's a violet leaf, as I mentioned in here, that gives it just this like coldness, cool, cold kind of a feeling. It also has tuberose and a lang, -a -lang and jasmine sambac, and there's a woodiness in the base, a really light woodiness. But this more than anything is that fragrance that you wear when you want to smell feminine, put together, pretty, a little bit aloof, well-mannered and refined. You know, you know exactly how to behave at a table, which silverware to use for what kind of dish, you know, what glass goes with what kind of beverage, all of that. This is the very well put together refined floral that's ever so soft. This presence is known because it is regal, tailored and put together, but it does not shout in the room, okay? It speaks in soft tones. Oblanche. Two beauties that just don't get enough love because they are not the longest lasting. They have very moderate longevity and people just decided they don't want to fuss with them anymore. But I think they deserve a lot of love. It's Oscar de la Renta, Bella Blanca, and Bella Rosa. Let's talk first about Bella Blanca, which is maybe like the fresher and greener of the two. There's a pear note in here that gives it some nice sweetness. There are white florals. And there's a greenness about this too that keeps it fresh and light and crisp and really great for warm spring and summer days. You can't go wrong with this. No one will be offended by you wearing this. It isn't the softest. Maybe it has a bit of moderate projection, although it doesn't last the longest, as I mentioned. But this is an underrated gem of a floral fragrance. I will say too that this has a little bit of an orange nuance to it, like a citrus, a soft, sweet citrus accord with musk and sandalwood in the base that richens this fragrance up and keeps it from being too light and airy. Like the tuberose from Daniel Hosier stays really light and crisp. This one has a bit more depth and oomph to it. If you're looking to maybe move this into the evening hours, this can take you there. Then I would say one of the prettiest rose fragrances in my collection. Again, I don't know if this is considered underrated because it did have a moment a while back and then a bunch of new rose fragrances came out on the market and this one just sort of got shoved aside and forgotten. So to me, this is like maybe a forgotten gem and it is Bella Rosa, as I mentioned. This is obviously a more rose forward fragrance compared to the white one. This also has a touch of mandarin orange and a freesia in here. Probably what's different is this has a little bit of amber and a touch of patchouli in the base that give it a warmth that the Bella Rosa maybe doesn't have. That one is a rich smelling fragrance. This one leans a little bit on the warmer side than that one, which stays a little bit on the cooler end. Both are just gorgeous. I do wish this lasted longer. I would say I get maybe a half a day out of it before I have to re-up. Husband loves this one. He really thinks this smells fantastic. If you want a cleaner smelling jasmine, like imagine a hairspray kind of scent, a nice hairspray. Imagine, do we like Aquanet? I like the smell of Aquanet. I do. <laughs> imagine that with a jasmine, green jasmine. And I don't have a full bottle, but it's Aaron's Cot Jasmine, which is a pretty fragrance if you like that sort of green leaning, linear, 
Yeah, it's just, it's green and jasmine, greenness and jasmine and a little bit of hairspray vibe. And it just somehow works if that is your day. Then back to a tuberose. And I would say this is a tuberose for people that don't even like tuberose. You might want to try this one because it's not the heavy tuberose that you get in some bombs like Truth or Dare or Fraca by Robert Piguet. This is from Ilisab and this is Essence number number nine, tuberose. I would say this tuberose is a very immature, like it hasn't fully bloomed kind of tuberose, but you're smelling it on the bud. It has a hint of a spice, like a cinnamon in it, a little bit of muskiness, and I would say a touch of citrus as well. Now that cinnamon, depending on the temperature, depending on the humidity in the air, may shine a little bit more than at other times where you might not even pick it up at all. But this is another soft, demure fragrance that does not leap off of your skin, does not enter the room before you, and yet you will smell put together and elegant when you have this fragrance on. Maybe one of the lightest florals, and in fact, I should have either started or ended the video with this one. One of the lightest florals in my collection is from Atelier des Arts, and it is Nuda Veritas. I don't know that I love the gold flex. I think I did at one point and I no longer do because I hear people complaining about this spraying out onto their skin. I haven't used enough of this to have that problem. I've used this a few times, but we'll definitely use it again this summer. It is light. I don't want to forget to share some of the unique notes that are in here. So forgive me while I look at the notes. Cologne at the top, an orange blossom that shines through. Osmanthus, tiara flower. So you get a little bit of a tropical sense to this. There's ambroxan, there's tejitas, there's ambrette, which gives it this musky sweet sense to it. It's fresh and it's light. It reminds me of summertime. It reminds me of soap. It reminds me of the beach. It reminds me of tropical gardens all at once, but it's very, very light in texture. It sits lightly on the skin. This is not a beast mode fragrance that's gonna project anywhere. This is gonna stay very close to you. You'll feel an out of the shower freshness, like you had a lotion on that had some tropical vibes to it. And on you put that on on top of your very clean, soapy type of gel that you washed yourself with, whatever that scent is, with that tropical lotion on top and you kind of swished yourself with something floral and walked out of the door. That's what you get out of this. I've got a little bit on in this corner. It's just so soft, so soft. So for those of you that want the softest of the soft, here you go, Nuda Veritas. I'm gonna round this out with three Jo Malone fragrances. The first one is created by Jo Malone, but it's made for Zara and it's elegantly Tokyo. And I only have this travel spray that my friend Joss here, Joss's Fragrance Mixology, go check out her channel that she shared with me. Thank you, Joss. This is a gem of a fragrance and I've got it sprayed here. There's something about this that reminds me of rice, like the powder that's on top of rice, a rice tea. Have you had rice tea? But there's a lily in here, which is what makes this appropriate for this video. A very light, again, clean, crisp, airy. Like if you think about the courses in a meal, you have a salad, which is like the lightest, right? The crispest, the crisp, what am I talking about? The crispest leaves, a light dressing. This is that part of the meal for you. This is not like your heavy meat and potatoes kind of a, a fragrance. Oh, this is beautiful. It is very elegant. I don't know why or how it smells like Tokyo. I imagine that it's supposed to smell like some of the gardens in Tokyo or something like that. But it is a very clean, light, white floral. If you've ever smelled Bézère Volé by Cartier, it is like a very toned down, almost a sweeter version of that. That one is a very green lily fragrance. This is like a sweetened, demure, almost like the a doily. It's like a doily version of that Cartier fragrance. It works. Like the lacy cousin, lace. <laughs> Bezer Volé. Then an actual Jo Malone fragrance, one of the softest, prettiest florals in my collection. I wear it and everyone agrees that it just smells delightful, fresh, uplifting, pretty. Jasmine, Sambac, and Marigold. It has a little bit of an herbal tone to it. There's a honey in here. There's also that jasmine and there's benzoin, which is like this resinous, vanillic kind of thing, but it is just such a pretty fragrance. This is a fragrance that I put on when I wanna smell all kinds of springtime fresh and floral and pretty. 
but I don't want to knock anyone out. I don't want to overpower a room. I want to just have my own self, my own little one foot perimeter of space smell really delightful. This is like a moderate longevity, so you may have to reapply. The ones in the black bottles from Jo Malone I find last longer than the very fleeting clear bottled cologne line, but still you will have to reapply this probably four to six hours into the day. Then perhaps one of my favorites for this soft florals category. It has a little hint of oomph, but not enough to be in my powerhouse florals. It's another Jo Malone. It's Tuberose Angelica, but this is the Rich Extract Extrate version. I have a little bottle of the, two, actually, I think I passed it along to someone. I'm sorry, the regular Tuberose Angelica, which is a very pretty fragrance. The difference here for me is that this is richened up some with a vanilla note. This is Tuberose. Obviously, it has Angelica, and it also has a yellow floral, a Lang -a -lang and soft pretty uplifting a little bit on the cold side this is not a warm fragrance even though it has some base because of the vanilla in it almost like an amped up version of nuda veritas like if this had more base more vanilla to it it might smell something like this so this is a hard to find fragrance i would say if you see it and you like the notes of tuberose and you like Angelica, you also have to like that Alang Alang. The Alang Alang in here is very, very light in texture. So it's not like a heavy banana type of Alang Alang. It's softer. That's been a theme here, right? The word soft. So that rounds out my lineup. I would love to hear from you in the comments what you think is a great soft floral that people may want to check out. I had the nerve to think about including the Lanterdi line in here, at least the original EDP. I know the nerve of me. Who am I kidding? A lot of people consider that more of a, f a powerhouse floral. I don't. It's a little soft on me. But then again, for me to think of something as a powerhouse, it has to almost knock you over <laughs> to be considered in that category. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, my friends.